Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is going to be something completely different. Something new, something I haven't even worked with before. But I'm deciding to give it a shot because I think they look kind of cool. Is these 3D light boxes. So this is one I kind of experimented on. So this was my first try into it. So I think it looks pretty cool, but I decided to do another one, but I'm using a uh, different colored paper to see if I can make it pop a little bit better. So, uh, but I'll go through all the steps. I'll uh, go through all the tools you need and uh, just everything involved with it. But we'll go through the steps. We'll see if we can get it to look as good as this. And then we'll do a comparison to see what it looks like with just the white paper like this. And then with the color paper, once we get done with it, let's get started and see what we can do. Okay, so first I want to kind of go over some of the tools or things you're going to need to make these light boxes. So, first thing you're actually going to need is the, the cry cut Maker 3. It's what they call it. I call it a Cricut. It's just easier to say, but it's a Cricut Maker 3, which I'll show you here in, in a second. Um, but besides that, um, the paper that you want to get is a minimum at least 65 pounds, 176 grams. Uh, they make it up to like 100 pounds, and that's just the thickness of the paper. But a minimum, you at least want 65 just to make it a little thicker, kind of like card cardstock, um, just so the paper that you cut stands up and uh, doesn't fold or turn or twist that easily or whatever. Um, but also, the thicker paper that you get. Uh, when you put your lights in, it may not, the light may not come through as well. Uh, but I haven't worked with it enough to know. So, so with that, you have your mats. And this is what you put your paper on to run it through your machine so it doesn't move or anything. And um, they do a good job. The company um, does a really good job with color coding the type of strength that the adhesive is. And they label each pad. And, you know for like a light grip a strong grip or a standard grip so and that's pretty much how strong the sticky stuff is to hold the paper so with this uh, I would just stick with the light grip because you, you don't want it so strong to where you can't even get the paper off of the mat so I would uh, suggest just using the light grip but as long as you maintain it you can actually use it for a pretty long time so next is our tools so uh, these three or four right here uh, I believe come in a kit that you can buy all in one but you have a little spatula tool and this is just to get up and underneath paper or small areas uh, to bring it up with and everything and you got little this is called like a weeder kind of like a hook tool and that's just to get into really small areas or details to try to to pull the paper up or whatever or poke some holes to get some of the residual that you cut out out and then, of course, some tweezers to pick up some of the small pieces. And this is a little scraper. And uh, once you pull the uh, what you cut off of the mat, there'll be residual or the excess uh, left on here. So you use this just to scrape all the excess off of it to get it off the paper, just so you're not sitting here and picking one little piece at a time or whatever. So you use the scraper to, to scrape it off with. And they come in different sizes of these, just depending on uh, what you want to do. And then uh, you also have a roller. Um, this is used when you put the paper on to, to roll it down to make sure it, you know, sticks well in all four corners or all the sides and everything. Nothing sticking up all that. So, and of course you got an X-Acto knife. It's just their version. So if you need to cut any small pieces out or whatever. So this is the, the Cricut machine. Got it open right now. So I'll actually uh, feed a piece of paper through and you can see how it cuts. And... Okay, so now we're gonna work on uploading a file into the Cricut software onto the canvas. So any of the files that you find on all the different websites that have them, they will contain a different number of layers for the picture or the scene that you have. So. So looking at ours that we're doing, um, you know, it has a lot of details in it. 
And as you can see, there's like nine different pages or layers associated with this just to make the scene pop a little bit better. And hopefully you can see this a little bit better than you did at the beginning. It's, you probably couldn't really see it too much. But, so, but each file is like this where it'll separate the scene into the number of layers that uh, is associated with it. So this is the main canvas page. And then uh, to get started, you go ahead and hit the upload button. Now, if you've done like a ton of them, because this is only list like about like 15 pages. So um, if you're wanting to find an older one, then you go over to the view all and it shows every single design uh, that you've uploaded ever. So once you find the one you want, you click on it and then you add, add the canvas and it pops it in there right there. So most files will have symbols on each corner. And this lock button right here, um, once it's locked, when you adjust the height and width, it'll both will change at the same time. But if you unclick it, or if you click it to unlock it, then when you move it, you can change just the height or the width, you know, individually. So it won't change it together, which I recommend. But some files will not have this lock button here, so you'll, you're stuck with changing both at the same time. So uh, what I usually do is I take it up to the top corner because in on this canvas page, it's got numbers up here to show you the size of the file. But also up here is two boxes that has the height and the width, the actual numbers. So uh, the important thing before you even start cutting is that I have found just because I have done this numerous times is uh, print out the page, cut it, and then once I got the box, then it, it didn't fit. Even though it says eight by 10, the actual dimensions inside the box is not an eight by 10. So, um, and with the shadow boxes, I've really only seen two different sizes of, of how deep they are. And usually they're only like an inch or an inch and a half thick. The one inch boxes will usually only fit uh, 3D scenes that are four pages or less. Five maybe, it just depends on the box. Four or five pages or less will fit an inch box. Anything more than that, inch and a half. Definitely make sure you have your box before you start cutting because the, the each box is different. So, um, but once you have your box, you take your measurements, then um, you can use this arrow to move it to those measurements. But also what I have found is you can just go up here and just enter the numbers directly. That way you don't have to try to get it to fit exactly to your number or whatever. You can just enter the number in. Okay. So once you have your measurements in, you got everything good to go, then what you want to do is you want to go up here to the make it. And then what this does is it's asking you, hey, what are you putting your, your paper on? You know, and uh, with anything getting cut on paper, you are going to use those sticky mats to make sure the paper doesn't move around or anything. So you're going to select the mat done and then here it just shows you this is how it's going to cut it on the mat out of the paper and everything and then once you hit continue this next page is asking you what are you cutting your scene on now these are our favorites that we've selected but uh, if, if there's nothing here then you click browse all materials uh, but the cardstock is usually at the at the top and it has the the, the different pounds the light the medium and the heavy so if you buy paper that says 65 pound, then you can go ahead and select that. If you, have, if you buy paper and it doesn't have the weight on it, then I would probably um, either use the medium cardstock or I would use the light cardstock and put more pressure in the blade, which I'll show you here in a second. But for now, we'll just go ahead and hit the light. We'll hit done. And then at this page, this is where you can select if you want the blade to cut a little deeper up here at the pressure there's more the, the default is just regular so you can select it to put more pressure in or put less pressure to cut so if the paper that you get doesn't have the actual weight on it that you don't know and you select light the 65 pound it may not cut all the way through and if it doesn't then you can select more and it'll cut a little deeper and if it still doesn't cut all the way through then you can go back with the paper and select the medium, the 80 pound weight, and it'll cut a little deeper than that. 
So it's just, you just gotta mess with it, practice, and just see what, uh, what cuts well with uh, the type of material and, and the blade pressure. So with this, um, this is where you go ahead and put your um, sheet on the paper and everything. And then uh, we're just gonna go ahead and cancel this just to show you something else. <clears throat> cancel, okay. <clears throat> so if once you get done, you get um, your page cut, got it removed and everything, and you wanna do the next page, what you wanna do is go up here and click new. And then you wanna, there's gives you three options to save, cancel, or replace. So you wanna click the replace button, and then it kinda clears it. And then you just do what we did before, you just go ahead and hit the upload button, go find your file, or your next page and everything, and then load it and start everything over, just like we did. Okay, so now we're gonna put our paper on our mat. Yeah, the mats always come with a, a thin film that covers it so it doesn't stick to anything, whatever, so you just peel the film off. And then you got your paper that you're gonna put on. Now, the paper really doesn't matter what the size it is. It could be eight and a half by 11, or it could be this uh, uh, scrapbooking paper that's a little bigger, it's like a 12 by 12. Um, that really doesn't matter because it's just gonna cut it the size of what the file is. So with these mats, it's got the grids on here, just uh, so you know where you're gonna be putting it. So you wanna line it up right with the zero, at least with the top line, as best you can. And with the side, try to get it as center as possible. And then you just lay it down, and then use the roller. And we're just gonna, not too hard, but just lightly, Okay, so with that, we're gonna load it into the machine. Okay, so we got our machine, got our paper and a mat lined up. So you see the flashing arrows here, that's, it's waiting for you to put this mat in. So it has two little adjustments right here that you put the mat into to line it up. And then once it won't go in any further and it's as straight as you can make it, you hit the arrow and the machine will pull it in. And what it does is it's gonna take the paper and it's gonna read the size of the paper just to see what's gonna be used. So, and it does this for every single time you put a piece of paper in. So, and the machine kind of levels it and then it goes right to the middle. And then once it's done, the little start icon will, will flash. And once that's ready, then you hit that. And then it's just gonna start cutting. So depending on the page that's going to be, or depending on the file or the picture, what it's going to be, depends on how long it's going to take to cut. So it's just going to go through, <clears throat> and it usually does the uh, the intricate stuff first, or the stuff in the middle, and then it works its way to the outside, and actually does the border last. Okay, so when it's done, then the arrows will flash again. And then when it does, you just hit that and it shoots the mat out. So you definitely don't want to pull on it or anything like that. And uh, so everything's done. So now we'll go over and we'll pull uh, the picture off the, off the mat. Okay, so this is one of the pages that was cut out. Uh, I just kind of used the red just to kind of make it so you can see a little bit better. So of course it's on our sticky mat uh, that I talked about earlier. So, uh, and the way it cuts it, it always cuts it on the inside, and then the outside is just excess. So you can just kind of peel this off, just throw it away. Now there's some people, which I'm still, since I'm new to this, I'm still learning how to do a lot of stuff. There's some people that says that you can, you know, turn the mat over, hold the paper down, and peel the mat up to keep the paper from bending or folding or whatever. Um, to, to get the paper off of the mat. Um, since I'm still kind of new to this, I haven't done it enough times to, to trust that process yet, I'm sure, because I, I just don't want the paper to tear, especially in the really thin sections or the, the designs that were you know have a point to them or whatever. Um, and if your machine, if it doesn't cut through all the way, then it's, you know, the, what's cut out is gonna stick uh, to what you're trying to tear. So I haven't trust that process yet. So uh, for me, I still kind of uh, 
try to get the excess part that I tear or take it out first instead of just trying to take out what was cut because it's just a bigger area to use and then I use the, the tools that we discussed earlier the little flat tool right here if, uh, if it looks like it's not going to come up that easy I usually just slide it up underneath just to uh, get a good grip on it and then usually as long as you get close to an edge it'll pop up so you don't have to worry too much about an edge or anything and then if you're in a really tight area where it don't look like it's going to pop up then you can use your little little hook tool here to get underneath it because you definitely want to keep the the detail as much as you can throughout and you just use a tool uh, to try to bring up all this excess that you're not going to be using at all and you know just definitely take your time with it you know you shouldn't be in a rush to try to rip it all out and everything you just and I say this is probably the, the one part that takes the longest to do is uh, is tearing and or getting this all this excess out slowly pull that up and usually it'll just come right off if it, if it cut through cleanly so there you go so we set that aside and usually the bigger pieces are the easiest to uh, to get taken out and again there's other there's a lot more people that have been doing this a lot longer than me that probably have better techniques on how to do certain things so this is just like I said me not having a lot of experience with it or whatever and uh, I'm sure their methods work just as fine as well but um, again still new what I usually do is on an edge I'll use the the flat tool and I'll just run it underneath it instead of trying to pull it up with my finger because you definitely don't want to have a crease or a bend or or anything in um, in any of your edges and then uh, as you can see it's completely loose from it but it'll still stick to it a little bit but this will help get to the middle parts and trust me uh, you'll have some pages that are that have a lot of intricate uh, cuts that you're definitely gonna have to you know slowly work at to get released and everything so just as always just take your time with it just trying to get this hand just trying to make sure it doesn't break anything and especially the sections with very small connections there we go and that's what I was saying about uh, you know trying to roll the mat because some of these are still kind of connected so and um, they may release they may not release but there's still the possibility that um, that it won't release and it might tear and again it's just just me not having the experience with it yet they're not done these too much so this is really my first one first light box I've ever put together so so I'm still learning and that's why it's good to tear out the excess if you can get it out of the way because then it's just something one less thing you gotta worry about and I could have tore this one out once I got to an edge and everything but uh, I was working pretty well with this so okay I think oh there we go and there we go so so I got that tore out so that's what it looks like so I'm just going back through and take out some of these excesses that uh, some of these residual pieces that didn't tear off and some of these holes right here and then I'll just use the tools to pop them through and just pull them gently so they don't uh, tear too much but if you do it just pull from the back that way if there is a tear it's on the back part where you're not going to see from the front okay so I know I talked before about uh, not about when you remove the mat, uh, the paper from the mats, uh, about rolling the mats and everything, but not having enough experience doing it, whatever. So I've actually been doing it a couple times while filming this uh, off camera. So 
it actually does work. So I want to just show you that uh, process. Now again, if you have a design that has a lot of holes or small pieces and everything, I would definitely be careful doing it because you have a potential of, of ripping those small pieces or not everything coming apart. And you can always remove everything off the mat and then take the residual stuff off uh, once you have it all off the mat. So it's totally up to you on how you want to do it. So, but first, I always still take off the outside edge because that's always going to come off no matter what. So, but what you do is you put the mat down and you roll it up. You just want to put your hand under and just start pushing down on the paper and then roll in the mat and just be on the lookout for any part of the cut paper to make sure it's not going to get stuck or caught on anything or whatever but you're just going to use your hand to slowly push it down and then you want to just make sure the mat doesn't flip up on you as well which happened to me a couple times so it's not the sticky where it's going to you know hurt your hand or anything like that but you just want to make sure that the paper's all the way down and then, and then there you go so that way you don't and then the residual just kind of comes right off and then you can work on the smaller pieces getting those out with your tools and everything but that way it doesn't curl the paper if you're trying to take the paper off and everything anything like that but i just wanted to show you that just so you can see what it looks like so uh and uh you know it's it, with anything it just requires more practice and uh gets more experience with it so now uh, a couple other things that you're going to need once you get to the, this part we're going to be making the uh, the spacers the foam spacers so you're going to need a foam foam uh foam board it's half inch thick this is a 20 by 30. i measured the borders right here let's see what they were and i just made them a little smaller for this one just so you wouldn't really be able to see them on the inside and everything um but i've seen people where they'll make an entire border that goes all the way around just so everything fits really nice which i mean i mean i'm sure that'll work but just to save on materials then I just did, did one inch blocks going around each of the sides just to hold it because uh, it still makes the space and everything so um, but um, either way would work so it just depends on your preference and what you want to do so for this I had a, a small ruler I got a, a long ruler so what I did is I measure them a quarter of an inch I measure the bottom and I already measure the top uh, just quarter inch thick inside and then what I do I get a nice big exacto knife so I put the ruler on the lines line it up and then kind of hold it in the middle because you're gonna be coming all the way down you don't want to hold it at the top come down and then the ruler the straight edge kind of get away from you so you always want to Either hold it toward the bottom or the middle. And then I'll just lightly make a cut. Don't go all the way down. You could if you wanted to, but uh, sometimes that pushes down on it. Kind of crimps it a little bit. So I just do that. Oh, that's still stuck. There we go. Okay. So there's your quarter of an inch spacer now what you will also need is some double-sided tissue tape so what I do is as it's still one piece I'm looking for there it is. this and then I just line it up it doesn't have to be right on the end But I just line it up and then I just go down the row. And if you get a little off, just work your way back to the middle. Oh, okay, and then once you get to the end, and you cut it off. That one you can cut off right on the end. And then you just repeat the process for the other side. There we go. Okay, so so we got tape on either side now. So the good thing with this mat is each little square here is an inch so I don't have to like measure 
or if you don't have a mat like this with the markers uh, laid out for you, then uh, you can get a ruler and just you know put it put it right next to it and just measure out an inch. And then what I do is I actually turn it on its side where you have the foam sticking up where you got the tape on facing away from you and to you, because that way you're not crimping, you're not pushing down on the foam when you're cutting it to crimp it or whatever. So I found that doing it on the side, it actually doesn't uh, crimp it as bad. And then I kind of saw to get it going and then just go down, and just push down on it. And there you go. So it's not really crimped and uh, it's a pretty good size. So, and then you just keep doing this all the way down. All right, everyone. So we got all of our pages cut, got them in order. And what I usually like to do, because once I print the page, I, on the back, I like to write the number of the page, just it's for whatever reason that, you know, I get out of order. But you see right there on the back, I wrote, you know, number eight. So this is page eight of nine, kitty here. And then, but I did that for each one of them that I printed. I put one through one through nine. This is page. This is number nine. So if you do that, then the highest number will be the first page you're going to work with when putting these together with the spacers. So as you can see, I got these spacers down to one inch. Um, I was kind of have them here for now just to see. Which this is what you can do too. Is I just put them on the ends just to see how I want to. I want to space them out as you're putting your pages on you could potentially be putting some here in the middle to hold the page up that you're not gonna see I mean if you can do that I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do two for now on the sides and I got them spaced evenly and everything so we'll go for that and then we'll see how it looks I mean I don't think there's really any right or wrong way I mean you, you can have three on each side it would look fine you could do uh, uh, spacers all the way around and it would look fine so it's just it's your preference on on uh, what you want to do with it uh, for materials and stuff like that so um, so I got these I got the the tape on on both sides so I'm just gonna go ahead and peel peel the, the paper off of one and then I am gonna go ahead and stick it on there right there and as you can see, it's just inside the line. So, two, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in. So we got all of these down. So I'm gonna get to grab page number eight. And then, and then what I used to do is just kind of fit it on just to see how it's gonna fit. But then also to see where it's hitting the page behind it. And as you can see right here, there's really no separation between uh, nine and eight. So that's what I was saying about putting spacers in the middle here to raise these sections up right here. The, uh, this page right here. So, so, so I'll put those two there. Now I'll put the page on. And now you can see the, you can kind of see the separation of the page. It's not really laying down on page nine or anything like that, but it's, it's popped up and that's what you want. You want that space in between because when you turn the light on, it'll come through these holes. That's what these big holes uh, cut out the bottom is for. It's for the light to come through and to go up each of the pages. You could go ahead and take the tape off of all uh, the spacers and then just line it up at the bottom and then just lay it down and you're good to go. Or you could just take the tape off the, the bottom spacers and stick it to there and then and then work your way up to make sure that it doesn't stick to anything up top while you're working on the bottom so I kind of did it both ways it's kind of up to you depends on the page and how much is on it how much you can control it so for now I'll just work on just the bottom part and then you know, I'll just work my way up just so you can see and then once it's lined up she actually looks good to me then I will press down on the spacer and it should be locked in so now you can work on working your way up you just kind of hold 
the rest and then uh, if you can grab the edge okay so so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this down so I'm gonna go ahead and press this down and then press these down because they're right there okay it's where it's just kind of hard to to hold it while you're doing it if you can do this that's why you know some people may prefer to remove all the paper and then just lay it down that one's pretty close to you still shouldn't be able to see it but okay spaces are in and there we go so so we got it the first two pages on so so now I'll go ahead and I'll just show you uh, the rest of the pages with the spacers in their locations and then we'll just work our way up until it's completely done As you can see, we finally got our uh, scene put together for our light box. But as with any new thing that you try, you always run into, I wouldn't say hurdles, but maybe some challenges that you don't really think of while you're working on it. <laughs> Which also, you know, is part of working on something new. You just don't expect something to happen or whatever which this is what I wanna, I wanna share with you uh, just so you don't make the same mistake. I mean, I'll make all the mistakes for you, that way you don't make the mistakes. But, um, but it's, there was an, another benefit to this as well, which I'll go over with it. But as you can see, um, got the scene put together, it actually looks great with the color compared to the one that's all white there on the left. Now, this is supposed to be a light box where you put a light behind it and it's supposed to uh, light up the scene and everything which I will show you the issue here in a second so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off and I have a little uh, light thing light stick whatever that I'll put behind it and uh, I'll, I'll kind of show you the issue that is there which you may already see okay so I got the lights off got my little light stick so I will show you what this is supposed to look like with the light behind the white one. So when you put the light behind it, that is what it's supposed to look like with it lit up. So you can see the dragon, the castle, everything. So it looks kind of cool and all. But my thing was, you know, when it's not lit up, you really can't see what's going on and everything, um, which I, that's why I wanted to add color to the pages and all that. So when it's not lit up, you can kind of see, you know, still see the scene add a little bit of color to it and then when it's lit up you know it should look pretty cool and all well <laughs> the the impact of that is as if I when I put the light behind this as you see it's not really lit up I mean it kind of is a little but not really I have a blue not really a dark blue but it's a darker blue for uh, the very back sheet and then for a couple of the middle scenes before the dragon, I have a brown. So that's pretty much soaking all that light back there. So it's not really getting through at all. But I mean, it still kind of looks okay and everything, but um, you're really not seeing it the way it should be. I made another one. So this one over here, which I'll turn the lights back on. You can see what colors I used. So this one, 
kind of looks a little bit better. So I see the light coming through and everything. So let me turn the lights back on and we can, uh, I'll show you the colors that I used. So you can see kind of the two side by side there. So instead of the dark blue for the sky for the last page, I used kind of a light blue. And for the uh, castle, I used a kind of a lighter gray and the, uh, the rocks or the trees right before the dragon right here, instead of brown, I used kind of a tan color to make it a little bit lighter. And of course the dragon, instead of it being red with the flames as a background, I changed it to yellow just so it was shining through a little bit more, but I kept the skeleton part the same color just because it looks, uh, I mean, you want the dragon to stand out. So get it to, to stand out and everything, just so when you put a light behind it, it uh, you can see everything going on just like if it was all, you know, all white. But as you can see, you know, if you're looking at the white, you can kind of see the scene, but it just doesn't stand out as <laughs> good as using the color pages and everything like that. Still use the dark colors for the box. You just don't need to use a light. If you want to just make a 3D shadow box or a 3D scene uh, shadow box, then go ahead and use the colors to make the scene, but just don't put a light in it. You know, and I think it still would look good but if you want to use a light, then you're definitely going to have to use a lighter color. If you want to do the all white, it still looks fine and everything. But, uh, but I definitely like the color pages. Final step is to put this all together in a box and some lights and all that good stuff. So uh, this is the, the box I got, 8x10. It's about an inch and a half thick just to accommodate the number of layers that I have and everything. So I've got the box, so we're going to put it in backwards. make it look like so and if you noticed I put a little color patch right here as you look through you can kind of see the clouds a little bit better so that's why you see the little color patch right there so um, this is the lights I have it's a uh, it's a battery operated LED um, got the little battery pack right here so what I did was I just cut a little opening right here for the uh, strip to come through has a little control panel right here. But this is the way I routed it. Um, just because of this, it was on like a little tape. It had some self sticky stuff on the back. Um, and also, if you do something like this where it has an LED with different modes, functions or whatever, I just made a copy of the instructions on how to how to work it. So, so that's the way it looks right now. So now I'm going to turn it on. So let me turn the lights off. So this is kind of what it looks like right now, which doesn't look too bad, but with these LEDs, it actually has a brightness. Okay, it has a brightness level to where you can increase the, the brightness of the lights and everything. So, um, but as you can see, this is just one type of color. And there's like green, really, blue there's the red I actually kind of like the red it looks pretty cool and just different uh, there's a the blue so it just depends on which type of LED lights you get if you'd like the different colors and everything there's never really dark red that one actually looks pretty cool so but uh, and there we are back to the beginning so that's it for our uh, 3d light box um, yeah, that's my first first one I ever did. Um, but I enjoyed it though. I think it looks pretty cool. And so, but with that, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like, share, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, ask me questions. Um, you know, I'll try to help you out or give you a good answer as best I can as I'm still learning this as well. So with that, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next episode.